Hello, traders. It's Thursday, November the 24th. This is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com, here to give you your FX market wrap-up for the past 24 hours of trade and an out for what we can expect over the next 48 hours of trading as we are going to go through the U.S. holiday period. I will not do a video tomorrow, and more likely than not, it's going to be a very quiet session. But... In this past session, we did see a lot more activity from the markets than I had expected. Uh, this is particularly true when you see some of the major benchmarks like the uh, U.S. dollar. Here, the uh, ICE dollar index, as we were looking at, made a remarkable push higher. Now, that move uh, comes on some relatively questionable fundamental backing. Uh, we did have a range of event risk. This is obviously what happens when we head into a uh, holiday period. A lot of the regular uh, events uh, release times, so they're usually set on a monthly basis, and they have very particular uh, periods for which they're going, like the third Thursday of every month or something. But these all had to be pushed up because of this holiday period. A lot of them were positive. The durable goods, the uh, Atlanta GDP Now forecast was unchanged, but still positive uh, in its growth forecast. Housing prices uh, also showed an improvement, as well as manufacturing activity. New home uh, sales actually slumped a little bit, but the second reading, or final reading, of the University of Michigan Consum Consumer Confidence Report also showed a significant upswing. We would also get a boost in the yield curve forecast, which I uh, put the emphasis on in yesterday's, or the Monday's video, uh, but that's not really what's going to give us a lot of lift. I think uh, we would also see and put a lot of focus on the FOMC minutes. I covered that live, but a lot of the move that we had seen from the dollar actually took place before we even got to the FOMC minutes. Now, the minutes themselves were, uh, uh, regardless, very positive. Positive in the fact that they did not undermine the interest rate forecast that the markets have put into play. As we've been talking about, rate forecasts are very robust. When we're talking about the probability of a rate forecast through uh, the end of this year, so for the December 14th meeting, which is the uh, next meeting, uh, the final one this year, we're already talking about approximately 100% probability of a forecast. Now, that's uh, or a rate hike. That is 98% probability of at least one hike. There's actually about 2% probability that there's going to be two. Now, as I said before, the emphasis is on not this current bearing on the December 14th meeting. I think the, the certainty of the market is already there. What we really need to see if we want to see the dollar continue its climb, and it's already at an incredible level. It's at 13-year uh, highs. And uh, looking at the big picture technicals, which we'll look at in just a second, uh, there is open sky above, if so given the fundamental backing. But it is that backing in the market conditions, which uh, are generally a, a, a type of analysis that says, is the market fee, uh, feasible and supportive of trends, not just for the currency, this currency alone, but for the markets as a whole. Uh, and they're not very uh, supportive. So we need much more fundamental support to keep this going. And to do so, we need it to improve that forecast up the curve. And that means we need to forecast more rate hikes at subsequent events. The next two rate decisions after the December 14th meeting are February the 1st and March the 15th. The probability that we will see an additional rate hike at the February 1st meeting, 10%. Slightly higher, I haven't updated this, than what we see right here. The probability that we are going to see a second rate hike at the March meeting is up to 25 plus percent. Plus, because you actually see that there is a slight probability that there is going to be uh, two rate hikes by that time beyond what we're seeing on December the, uh, the 14th. So there is a little bit of a pickup going out that curve. That's what we need to look for, but it's going to be very difficult to sustain this. The Fed is looking at little disruption, but it is very easy to set it off course. This is kind of like uh, taking a very high risk, but potentially a high return kind of trade when it comes to the dollar. Yes, we have uh, all the current factors in play. Inflation expectations, which the Fed uh, minutes actually listed out. Their employment uh, reflection is very positive. But it is the dependency on a stable market, which is very concerning. Because it is the nature of the market not to remain stable for uh, the foreseeable future, especially when there are such uh, considerable uncertainties ahead of us. And that includes global issues as well as local. So 
I am still not participating in this. I go into more detail about uh, why I don't want to participate in the dollars advance and uh, uh, for the same course, the S&P 500 and the related risk on sentiment uh, rally. But it is certainly something where you have to really weigh out your expectations going forward. You have to be very confident in what you uh, foresee, and you're going to have to really have a high tolerance for risk, because this is a very risky trade, especially after this very remarkable run from the dollar. Let's take a look at the dollar's monthly chart because I do want to give you a sense of where we're at. There is, as you can see here, a high that we set back in 2001, a low of obviously uh, slightly after 2008, before the great financial crisis struck. The 61.8 FIB of that move, an uh, important Fibonacci level, uh, actually stands at about 101.75, so very close to where we are today. Very uh, remarkable place for us to test going into the holiday trading conditions. I don't have the full historical data loaded here, but uh, this, uh, these purple Fibonacci lines actually are the uh, historical uh, time frame for the DAX, or sorry, the DAX, the DXY going back to the 60s. And this actually puts the 38.2 Fib up here at about 105, just shy of 105. So there are some very remarkable technical levels if you just go by technicals, but it's the fundamentals that really make me concerned. It's also market conditions because we really don't have uh, conditions particularly conducive to fueling follow through in major trends. These aren't trend oriented markets. It's not a uh, bifurcated financial situation where one particular country or one particular asset class or one particular stock or currency is looking like it's going to do profoundly better than its counterparts and not see something that uh, fundamentally checks all of them. It knocks down the highest standing nail, if you will. And that is what keeps me on the sidelines. Now, my restraint perhaps keeps me from some good trades. Uh, the Euro USD has eventually found its way uh, back down to that 105 level. Quite a remarkable level that we're facing, most liquid currency pair in the world, and you can bet I'm going to be fixated on this uh, on Friday when we come back to active markets, and certainly next week. This is still probably going to have much more to do with the dollar than it does the euro. So make those expectations, set them uh, early on. My lack of conviction in risk trends, my lack of conviction in the dollar's view, uh, has certainly kept me off of the yen crosses. Generally, they have outperformed, but it's the dollar yen that is really standing uh, the most prominently as the best performer. I don't uh, I don't second guess the decision, and I certainly am not upset that I missed out. I mean, of course, if I knew this was going to rally for certain, I would have absolutely taken the trade. Why not take the opportunity? But I didn't know, and the fundamentals and the market conditions and even the technicals don't uh, coincide nicely to set the probabilities. And going forward, if I were to look at this now, certainly hasn't changed. All, uh, all it has done is actually made the, uh, a greater difficulty uh, to actually achieve continued appreciation because we are now at a relatively rich valuation on risk trends and dollar view. So I'm not going to uh, even consider touching the dollar yen from current levels, nor am I going to be looking more favorably to uh, lesser leveraged, fundamentally speaking, yen crosses. Euro yen, uh, pound yen is actually testing uh, its trend line. I'm not looking at that as an opportunity that's going to follow through on what the dollar yen has already achieved because I am skeptical still of risk. Now, speaking of the pound, this past session was noteworthy for the release of the autumn statement from the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, Hammond. He did give us uh, the the view we expected. All right, deficits are going to grow, uh, growth forecasts are uncertain post Brexit, and he made mention of the pound. Nothing really changed though. This is the daily chart. Here is the four-hour chart of the pound dollar. Not much changed. Uh, I am still very interested in some of the pound crosses, but we need some kind of catalyst to actually move us off of this restraint. So taking a look here at the euro pound, there is support. Into the final uh, or into the next 24 hours, things are probably going to be relatively quiet. U.S. markets are going to be offline, and these uh, very stretched risk conditions are not going to make it much easier to trade on Friday. But do keep that in mind when we come back to the final session of the trading week. Uh, we're going to have a lot of restraint. All right, we'll wrap it up here. I'll do the next and final video for this week on Friday evening. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.